Today we're going to be taking a look at the Agritech Sonic 1200 portable power station and performing a few different tests to see how it holds up to the manufacturer's stated specs and also running a charging test of their 100 watt solar panel. And I'll leave you with my final thoughts and I'll show you how it stacks up to some of the other power stations and panels that I've tested in the past to help you decide whether or not this is something you should buy. But overall, I was very impressed with it because it exceeded my expectations in most of my testing and it offers excellent value, particularly from a cost per watt perspective. If you want to pick up the power station and help support my channel at the same time, you can use the links down in the description below. All right, so this is the Agritech Sonic 1200, and this is an NCM-based power station with a 999 watt-hour capacity. It has an unusual shaped circular display, and this is gonna give you the remaining battery life as a percentage, the input and the output speeds in watts, an estimation of the remaining runtime, as well as basic indicators letting you know whether or not the USB ports and the outlets are live. And to the right of the display, there's a car style DC output. And on the left, we've got a USB output selection, including two USB-C ports, which will combine for 100 watts, and two USB-A ports, which will combine for a total of 24 watts. The power button is actually on top of the device, and this button next to it will turn on and off this light bar. And it's got a cool white color temperature with four different brightness levels. And the top also serves as a 15 watt wireless charging pad. And there's also a carrying handle on top as well. On the right side of the power station, we've got two different 110 volt AC outlets. And this is kind of an unusual location for these ports since you typically see them on the front, but it does make powering a lot of devices simultaneously a bit less cluttered. And it's rated for a continuous 1200 watts and a 2200 watt surge. And we'll be testing out the continuous output a little later in the video. On the other side, we've got the AC input, which should support charging speeds up to 1000 watts. And this is incredibly fast and Agritech claims that you can fully charge the power station in less than two hours And we'll be putting this to the test later in the video and also an XT60 input to connect a solar charger Which should accept a maximum of 200 watts now We're gonna jump into some testing to see if the sonic 1200 holds up to some of the most important tasks And first we'll see if it can continuously run at the 1200 watt max output it claims So now we're gonna plug in a hot air gun and once we plugged in and then turned it on to its highest setting we were actually able to comfortably run at over 1400 watts for about a minute before it dropped down to right around 1200 watts and it continued to power the hot air gun with no issues so it's definitely capable of running at the specs that it claims next we're going to test the true watt hour capacity of this power station and see how close it comes to the 999 watt hour stated and this will give you an indication of how long you'll be able to run your devices when you look up their watts so in order to test this we've got this wall outlet style power meter which will display the kilowatt hours and we'll be running this hot air gun on high at about 1200 watts which will cause the internal fans to come on so it'll be a good test of how efficient this this device is and at the end it's going to give us a measurement in total watt hours and now that the power station does appear to be completely dead and none of the ports are working and the meter is reading 765 watt hours which is about 77 percent of the stated capacity which is excellent and definitely one of the better ones that i've tested and the true cost per usable watt hours is going to be around 74 cents which is one of the most affordable that i've tested on the channel now that we're down to an empty battery we're going to plug in the power station to the wall outlet and see how long it takes to charge and the charging cable itself is pretty slim and you can see on the display that the charging speed is quick at over 740 watts and I plugged it in at about 350 p.m. and it was fully charged by 534 p.m. so the total charge time was 1 hour and 44 minutes which was pretty quick and very close to the 1 hour and 40 minute charging time that, that Agritech claimed on their website another test I like to run on my power station is a fridge runtime test and this might be important to you if you're worried about your food spoiling during a power outage and what we're gonna do is plug the fridge into the power station and see how long it can run for I plugged it in in the morning at 8.17 a.m. and we did use it normally throughout the day and it was able to keep the fridge running for an impressive 13 hours and 8 minutes. The final test we're going to do is see if this device has a UPS mode and whether or not it can be used as a backup battery for electronics. Right now we're on battery mode and we're going to transition to charging mode and it cannot handle this transition. So it would not be great as a backup battery for electronics because you cannot run with the AC charging plugged in. Now we're going to test out Agritech's 100 watt solar panel and see what kind of speeds we can get charging up the Sonic 1200. Agritech's panel is ultra compact and it's like a half size briefcase so it does have a lot smaller footprint than the other 100 watt panels that I've tested in the past. And this is a monocrystalline panel and it's really lightweight at just under 12 pounds. The panels are IP67 rated and protected by a fabric coating and the panels have ETFE lamination and overall it feels very well made and the panel has an MC4 style connector with an adapter for Anderson XT60 and DC5521. So it will be compatible with a lot of different generators and the setup was very easy. And once I got everything connected and plugged into the power station, I was able to get charging speeds of 
around 93 watts, which is 93% of what was claimed, which is exceptional, and it's the best 100 watt panel that I've tested. And at a $200 price tag, that brings the cost per tested watt to around $2.14, which is really good. I've tested out a bunch of different solar panels on this channel and compiled all of my testing results into this database. And if you want to check that out, there will be a link down in the description below. We'll wrap things up with my final thoughts on the Sonic 1200, which currently sells for $569 by itself or $709 if you want to pick it up together with the 100 watt solar panel. I've been building this database of power stations I've tested out on the channel to help better compare and put each power station's strengths and weaknesses into perspective. And for the sake of making the comparison more fair, we'll filter it to include power stations in the $500 to $800 range. The Agritech did very well compared to the other power stations, especially considering how reasonably priced it is. And overall, I do think this is a great power station and solar panel combo for the price if you need an entry level setup. And let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section. And if you have any interest in learning more and supporting the channel, please consider using the links down in the description below and I'll also leave a link to the power station database down there as well.